Eagle Eye viewers last week may have noticed that I have not signed my new ISA agreement with Trading212. There's multiple reasons for this, but one of the reasons is I'm very cautious about the safety of Trading212. It's a fairly new-ish company, especially in my eyes, and it doesn't have the same recognition as a broker as some of the bigwigs in the UK financial space. I've been this cautious for at least three years now. Trading212 has done something extremely surprising this year they filed their paperwork on time. Last year, Trading212 sparked a lot of trouble when they filed their accounts late. There was a ton of speculation why, a, a lot of lies, a, a lot of just generally made up stuff. It turned out everything was perfectly fine and Trading212 returned their best year yet, making a net profit of 44 million. This year, their accounts have been released early. Well, it feels early to me anyway. The accounts contain details from only six months ago. This gives us the best possible snapshot of Trading212 that we've ever had. It really tells us how their business is running right now. There's a few important things that they point out in their statement. One key point is that they only started onboarding last August, so they haven't really been able to generate as much as they wanted in revenue. In case you don't remember, in late 2020, the doors closed to Trading212 because there was simply too much demand. Trading212 state that they needed this year to update their systems so it could run properly with the volume of customers that it was receiving. I have no doubt that this was likely the real reason. I was there back in the old days of Trading212 when the app would just completely freeze when the US market opened. It's right now, but Trading212 seems to be having a mare. That must mean that there's so much activity going on and Trading212 is not keeping up. This isn't the first time something like this has happened with Trading212, but at least they're not locking us out of the account this time. I don't think we have any of that now. Even dividends seem to be showing up on time. Trading212, as usual, highlights its principal risks as it does with every report. It talks about the use of technology in case users move away from mobile phones and move back to their laptops to do trading. It's, it's a risk. They talk about their risk to fluctuations in the stock market. They talk about regulation. They see it as a possibility that one day CFD trading could be shut down. They talk about liquidity risk, which is something I went over in greater detail two weeks ago in a video. Check that one out if you wanna be bored to death. Nah, none of my videos are boring. He says, looking through accounts of Trading212. And now for the good stuff. Trading212's income statement looks pretty solid, but only really as solid as last year. In fact, year on year, Trading212 has shrunk in net income and only barely grown in overall revenue. One big positive is the balance sheet with 120 million assets, 99 million is in cash and equivalents or short-term assets, and that's compared to 16 million in total liabilities. We have ourselves a really good run rate here. It's very good news. It means Trading212 could run for what? Five years and not earn another penny? Quite, quite good. Less good news is that Trading212 has taken out a large loan this year of 17 million and is paying back 11 million in loans just in one year. I mean, I've got to admit, it doesn't seem to be breaking the bank at all. There's a good chance it was taken out prior to the interest rates hikes as well. But it's never wonderful seeing debt on a company cash flow statement, especially one as young as Trading212. I keep calling them young. They've been around for like 15 years, but they, this version of Trading212 is quite new. I'd be very interested to see what they plan on doing with this money and what new things are gonna to come to Trading212 in the near future. Also a dividend. As far as I know, there are two main investors in Trading212, but that's not really the important detail here. What's important is there's been 15 million paid in dividends out to shareholders. My gut feeling says this is very early to be paying out this sort of return, especially as they only recently issued these shares and growth has kind of slowed down. But you can't deny that the money is there. So while it appears to increase the risk of trading 212 very slightly, I do agree there does need to be a moment in time where there's risk off for the founders. Trading212, of course, did end the year with 99 million in cash. So what's what's 15 million, I guess? It's not that bad. On page 19, Trading212 has a list of where their revenues come from. Unfortunately, they don't break it down. That would be lovely. But I don't even think you'd get that level of transparency from a public company. I like this transparency. I don't even think Trading212 have to be this transparent. Their revenue comes from a mix of sources, CFD, hedging, 
foreign exchange fees, which were a big problem a couple of years ago. Share lending, which has been another big problem in their side. Remember next year, a share lending revenue will be halved because half of share lending revenue is going to go to the customers, which is a pretty good move to be fair. I just hope they can afford it. And of course they finally get revenue from market fluctuations themselves. What they do not earn money off is money that's been separated into segregated accounts for safety. That's possibly not information that everybody understands. These things though shouldn't be new to anyone who's been through these reports with me in the past, but it's always good to check. So how does Trading212 compare with its competitors? If I did wanna take my money out and put it somewhere else, where could I go? It's been a while since Free Trade released an updated set of their accounts, but we do find a similar healthy set of accounts from them in 2021. By the way, I need to point out that I do invest with Trading212. They have given me free shares in the past, and I'm part of a Discord where a lot of the people in there are quite negative about Free Trade. I try to be as unbiased as I possibly can, but I just wanna let you know that I could be prone to these biases. In 2021, Free Trade made 12 million in revenue, but ended the year with a total loss of 17 million. From recent information given in Free Trade's latest crowdfunding round, in quarter one of 2023, Free Trade has made over one third of the revenue than it made in all of 2021. Pretty good. It's also reduced costs by 57%. But the business model still isn't profitable with 14.9 million in revenue last year, but making a loss of 28.7 million in EBITDA. Free Trade appear to make most of their money from issuing shares. I might even have to be as bold as to suggest it could be entirely what's keeping this business afloat. 35 million. Am I reading that right? 35, I must be. 35 million in new equity. A positive of this though does mean that the ownership of free trade could mainly be with its core customer base, which is quite a nice thing really. You know, owned by the customers. In their funding rounds, they offer perks such as beta access, premium services, and even their own NFT. Yes, we just went, Ooh. But if free trade after all this time is not profitable, I do question whether free trade is a safe investment here, you know, for crowdfunding. In one of free trade's first rounds of crowdfunding, it set out very strong targets for future growth. By year five, they expected to be well in profit, but they have not delivered on that. In my opinion, I kind of want my own investments to be with a profitable company. That's not me. I have nothing against free trade. I think the, the app seems to be really good. Uh, their fees structure is complicated, but it's there. I've got nothing against free trade. I just think I want the investment platform that I'm investing with to be profitable itself, just for safety. Pretty much every other investment platform is profitable in one way or another. Hargoose Lansdowne probably has the best history of profitability, legacy, and peace of mind. They're just going to make you pay for it. And of course, Trading212 is making most of their money from a persistent gambling machine, but they're making money. Overall, Trading212 is showing strong numbers, and more importantly, showing a strong balance sheet, especially in quite tough times for the stock market. Competitors are also sourcing new capital for tough times and seeking new revenue streams. My main concern here for Trading212 is that the growth of this brand new fintech company has slowed. In these early stages, if you believe Kathy Wood, the growth in these new businesses should be exponential. That's in customer growth and in revenue growth. But last year, even with the doors opening, we didn't see this with Trading212. This could certainly be just one blip year in a very long journey. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the bosses of Trading212 would say. But this is why I monitor these accounts this year because I want to be able to spot trends and I want to improve my confidence in Trading212 because it holds my entire life savings. Right now, I see no reason why I would withdraw my money from Trading212, but I can't stress enough, these accounts aren't completely rosy. Like I said, in the current public marketplace, I think that Trading212 would have lost a hefty chunk of market cap if this company was public. But you will not see me moving away from Trading212 this year.